If you was a cook for your slaveholder, just slip this poison in, right? It was so widespread that in Haiti, poison was called, during his time, poison was called Makendo. <laughs> they called poison Makendo. Because that's, not, that's, how, that's how widespread his use of poison was, right? We're going to hit him physically, but also we want to do this poison thing too. Francois Makendo. Serious network. He had a network of operatives, brothers and sisters. He was fluent in Arabic. He was born in Guinea, so he was probably Mendinko. This is all facts. He was born in Guinea. He was fluent in Arabic. He was an imam, a so-called marabout. When they finally caught him, they burnt him at the stake. As, as, the, as the fire was going, the, um, the stake broke. So you know, the people said, ooh, that must, he must be the man, right? So he said, they said, okay, do it again. He said, don't worry, don't worry, when I die, I'm going to, you know, turn into a bird and fly away. Don't worry, you know, that type of thing. They end up bringing him at the stake. The next one, Bookman, Jamaica. He was from Jamaica. He was in Haiti. These are the two most famous maroon leaders in Haitian history before the revolution. Bookman. And Bookman meant just that. Book man. Man of the book. The Quran. The Quran. August 14, 1791, revolt destroyed 2,000 plantations, 1,000 slaveholders killed. An English lieutenant in Sierra Leone said this, check this out, there's a quote, the Mandinko were prime ministers of every town, this is in Sierra Leone, he's talking about Sierra Leone, this British lieutenant, the Mandingo were prime ministers of every town and they went by the name Bookman. Man of the book. The second most famous leader of a maroon society in Haiti was Bookman. Imams, so-called Maribald. Brazil, I'm going kind of fast here. Brazil. Brazil was straight up serious. This is where most of the jihad movement of the Usman and Folios people went to, Brazil. It's no coincidence that Brazil had the most serious um, Muslim revolts ever. 1807, revolt was uncovered. 1808, the city was attacked by Muslims. 1814, another major revolt. Less than a month later, another major revolt. There was no fewer than 17 revolts between 1830 and 18, I'm sorry, 1816 and 1830 in Brazil. No fewer than 17 revolts led by Muslims. Muslims were identified as the leaders in five of them. Muslims were identified as the leader of, the, uh, of, of at least five of those revolts. At least five of those 17, Muslims led them. January 25th, 1835, the largest revolt period. The Bahia Revolt, the uniform, white baggy pants, white long shirts, kufis and uh, white kufis and white turbans. That was the uniform. Brothers walked around with swords, attacked the National Guard barracks, attacked the city jails because it was, there was a Muslim leader in the city jail who was being held. Attacked the city jail to free the Muslim leader. 1835, major revolt. It was major. Muslims, clearly Muslims. It was the best planned, it was the most daring, and it came after the Haitian Revolution. It came after the Haitian Revolution. Right? I mean, just took care of business. Took care of business. Here's the preset. It cannot be denied that the Malis, Malis, Mali, West Africa, West African Muslims were very brave. The Muslims before this revolt had a base. They had their own schools, they had their own books, they had their own curriculums, they had their own mosque, they had, they had papers, they wrote, they wrote in Arabic. This is where they really used the Arabic as code in the Bahia revolt. That's where they used it. The Bahia revolt in Brazil really did. And they had uniforms. When some of them were captured, brothers and sisters, and they were going to be hung. The government told other slaves, we will give you four months salary. We'll give you four months salary. You'll be living rich. Of anyone who will hang them, they were going to hang 18. Nobody would do it. None of the slaves would hang them. None of them. So they upped the ante. We'll give you this, we'll give you that. We'll give... None of them would hang them. None of them would hang them. 
So they had to do it. They admitted that Islam was a major factor. Check out what one of the historians said. This is from, um, from Brazil. <clears throat> there may have been a little of all of this in these revolts, but they were forgetting the most important factor. The basis of all these uprisings, which in reality was the presence of Islam in Bahia. One of their historians said that the, the uprising in Bahia represented a real holy war rage, waged by Muslims against Christians. On the international uh, stage, almost, almost no matter what country you go to, uh, Musulman is the word for Muslim. Musulman. Musulman. One historian said, the direct repercussion, now check this out, the direct repercussion of the warring, the warring events that were taking place in Africa, Uthman Danfodio's holy war, continued in Bahia in the form of slave revolts and even free Africans' revolts. This is one of their historians. Another one of their historians, in a nutshell, this was a Mali plot but an African uprising. A Mali plot, but an African uprising. It was launched, brothers and sisters, during Ramadan. It was launched during Ramadan. And my respected brothers and sisters, it was serious. Okay, let me jump to the close. And let's try to bring this up to date, inshallah. Brothers and sisters, if you look at the history of African Muslim slaves in the Americas, if you look at the history, and look and see how the Muslims, African Muslims, responded to their slave condition, one of the things that you'll see is that Islam was the perfect tool for our liberation. It was a perfect tool. As a result of us practicing this deen and being Muslims, as we said earlier, we were organizers. We built communities. We built schools. We had a base by which to launch the revolution. We had a base by uh, we had a, we built bases by which to confront the slave system. We confronted the slave system. We didn't try to assimilate into the slave system. We didn't try to become um, uh, um, lose our identity into the slave system. We stood up against the slave system, keeping our Islamic identity, and that Islamic identity was intertwined and not separated from our African identity. We had bases. We had organization, we had customs, we had language, we had aliza, we had self-respect and dignity, we had self-confidence in this slave condition. We fasted during Ramadan. The Muslims fasted during Ramadan. Now you barely get enough to eat already, and you fasted during Ramadan. Muslims kept up their prayers, tried to pay their zakat, tried to pay their zakat and knew because of their circumstances, they probably was not getting to the Hajj. So what did they find in the Georgia Sea Islands, brothers and sisters? What did they find? They found, for example, African slaves who, in a church, would build their altar in the middle of the floor. And then in the middle of the floor, while it's in the middle of the floor, they would, they would go around their altar over and over again, right? They call it shout, 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 right? When you walk around the Kaaba, after you walk around the Kaaba the first time, what is that called? 